I, a length and a half, and then, you know, he ends up that way. But when I saw the race again, I saw Bourbonic just kind of blow by him. So he kind of hung Crowded Trade. So that kind of, I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I, I it, Like I say, the race on paper looks better than the race on video. If you look at that race and pull it up on YouTube or, you know, however you look at your races, you will see that Crowded Trade was kind of losing ground in the wood. Now he's off. He's been off. That may be a good thing. He may take to the Pimlico surface. Who knows? However, you know, it's Chad Brown and it's Javier Castellano. You know, he's never out of the money in three starts. Could this be another cloud computing situation? Maybe I'm not seeing it. I do like the other Chad Brown horse. I will get to in a second best. However, you know, this is a horse you cannot leave off your exotics, obviously. You get in Javier today, and, you know, Javier and Chad, is, uh, you know, they're a deadly combination. So I, I would, you know, on the win end, maybe not, but in the horizontal, absolutely. The number five horse, Midnight Bourbon, also is a, a coat coming out of the Kentucky Derby. The three-year-old by Win It for America. Tis now. This is Asmussen horse. I kind of thought. I mean, this is Winchell thoroughbred horse. This is this is a, 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 a outfit that Ricardo Santana rides for all the time, not just Asmussen. So it's, you know, I was kind of shocked that when Mike Smith was not going to ride this horse, that uh, Irad Ortiz ends up here and Santana does not. Nevertheless. Not going to be complaining about Irad. You know, I look at the horse, you know, this this coat was next to Mandaloon, ran some really decent races in at, at fairgrounds. That Kentucky Derby uh, race is not that bad. I mean, horses were closing a little ground in the Derby. They never got to Medina Spirit, but they closed a lot of ground. And like I said, you know, even though the Preakness is shorter, the pace – Figures to be faster. So Midnight Bourbon, obviously, you know, not, uh, probably about the similar post that he had as a derby. It's halfway through. He had the, the 10 hole in the derby. He has the five horse out of 10 runners here. So really not a, a significant uh, change in post position. I, d- I just think that, you know, the horse it's going to be, like I say, a smaller field. Your chances are going to increase. You may not have the trouble that he had in the Derby. Every horse seems like they have trouble in the Derby. So, you know, you just look and see where this horse is, is forwardly placed most time. You see in the Derby, you know, he was seven lengths, 11 lengths out of it at the second call, where most of his races, he's up or near the lead. Real, forwardly placed. But, you know, so look for Midnight Bourbon to probably sit off Medina Spirit and Concert Tour. At least try to make his move from there. Will I use him on top as far as pick threes or will I include him in the pick three? Mm, You know, no, I won't. And this is going to sound strange to you. Now, universally speaking, I think. Every every horse racing fan or every horse racing journalist or trainer would say that Irad Ortiz is ahead of the curve compared to Ricardo Santana as riders and, and clout and what they get and the horses he get and everything like this. But we all know Santana rides for Asmussen. And I can tell you, I would believe that, and this Winchell Thoroughbreds, If this coat was live, Santana would be on him. Santana would be on him. That doesn't mean I read can't move this horse up. But if this horse, if this horse was live, I would think that Ricardo would have gotten the call from Asmussen to like say, okay, let's, let's do this. So that in itself is kind of making me, you know, kind of like waver a little bit, but once again, you know, <laughs> superfectus, trifectus, exactly, absolutely, but not on the win in. The number six horse, Rombier, Rombear, Rombear, uh, is a three-year-old coat by Twirling Candy. Now, this coat, 
this coach can make some run. This coach can make some noise tomorrow or today. You know, he ran in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile to essential quality. Didn't run bad. Only missed by six lengths. You know, he 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 was right there. You know, he started out on the turf. Looked like he's going to be a turf horse. But, you know, uh, Mike McCarthy put him on the dirt. And, you know, he kind of, you know, kind of not embarrassed himself. Is he on this particular level? Maybe not. But, you know, in horse racing, you don't have to be on a level overall to to outshine a particular horse or a particular field on a particular day. All you have to do is be better than them and have least amount of traffic or trouble on that day. There's many a time in horse racing where the best horse don't always win the race. We all know that. So, hey, not going to use him on the front, but like I said, I'm just saying that he does, you know, he doesn't embarrass himself. You know, he could, you know, Flavian Pratt, you know, it's a very, very decent rider. So Flavian can get the most out of him. He can be, he can surprise. He can shake the field up a little bit. I, w- I wouldn't be surprised. Not at all. The number seven horse, Francisco Dina, is a three-year-old coat by Travers winner. 2013 Travers winner will take charge. Now, this coat is coming from uh, overseas in Maidan where Joe Rosario, who's riding her today, or riding him today, Rode him in that particular race. It's a grade two, $750,000 race. And finished kind of up the track. Had come in there on a two-race winning streak. Started off in Japan and ran even in her fir- in his first race, but then came into these last two races at a mile and an eighth before that Maidan race and aired. And so on the dirt here, like I say, by a, you know, it's a Kentucky bred by a, you know, a U.S. sire, uh, I, you know, I, <laughs> not a typical European or, or overseas horse from the United States who lags back, breaks breaks bad. This coat breaks on or near the lead. And you look at his comments, it says track leader. So he's somewhere up and near the lead. So he can be the fourth horse behind Medina Spirit and Concert Tour early. And then right there with Midnight Bourbon, he could be sitting off those three horses in the position that he wants to be in wherever Joel Rosario wants to put him. Todd Pletcher is sending out an honor code coat named Unbridled Honor, the eight, and is going to employ Luis Saez for this one. A fast closing second in the Lexington on a sloppy track at Keeneland. Before that, the fast track at Tampa Bay. Ran even, was a long shot in both those races, broke the maiden at Tampa Bay. Not the buyer was 78. That's really kind of below average for these types. Um, Likes to come from out of it. The pace tomorrow, in my opinion, is going to be, it's not going to be hot, but it's going to be decent. And if if you notice, Pimlico is a very, very sandy track. It looks very deep. And you don't see a lot of horses coming out of the clouds, and especially in these big races. So, you know, I'm not expecting unbridled honor to, like I said, I'm not expecting any, any horse who wins the race tomorrow to come out of the clouds and pass six or seven horses. You may pass five or six or seven horses to run third or second, but I can't see – anyone passing five or six or seven horses to win the race. And I don't think unbridled honor is, is going to be doing that either. The number nine horse risk taking is my top selection tomorrow. The three-year-old Medaglia Doral coat. This is a Chad Brown trained horse. This horse was the beaten favorite in the wood Memorial coming out of the same race as his stable mate crowded trade. Now, I went back and watched the wood for about the 18th time yesterday. Here's what I saw with risk taking. I'm looking at the start and in the comments, it says Bobble start. I don't know who wrote these comments, but risk taking did not have a bobbled start. Not at all. The, 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 his stable mate crowded trade had more of an uneventful start than risk taking. I thought risk taking start was decent. What I like about risk taking tomorrow is 
he when he was in the clear in the wood turning for home, something hit him. It looked like something hit him in the face or on the body, and he stopped running. He was on the outside on the far turn in the clear. Irad had him, and he was passing horses, and he wasn't. He almost looked like he almost looked like Tappet in the wood. Along, if you remember, if you watched the race for Tappet in the 2002 wood, when Tappet was on that same spot in that same little stretch in the wood, and he was passing horses like they were standing still without even being asked. Well, risk taking was not really doing that, but he was keeping up without being asked because Arad had not let him go yet. I think he thought he had more horse than he really had, and he probably did. I saw him get spoofed a little bit. Something hit him, and he stopped running. He ended up finish, finishing seven by six lengths. Looks like a very even race on paper. Before the wood, he aired in the withers by three lengths and then broke his maiden at Aqueduct as well. So two nice races at Aqueduct, and then as the beaten, as the favorite in the wood memorial, he kind of threw in a clunker. Okay, so what does that mean? What, what that really means is now you're going to get a price tomorrow. Jose, Brother Jose takes over. Okay, so this could be the Chad Brown cloud computing horse and not the four uh, crowded trade. In my opinion, this is the cloud computing. The beaten favorite, something went amiss on the far turn, came out of two sharp races. Now, what's going to happen is that he's going to probably take back from the outside horse concert tour, who obviously has more gate speed than risk taking. So I think Jose is going to have to take risk taking over to the rail, uh, the traffic. I don't want to see him going wide on the turn like he did in the wood, because then if he does, it'll be probably a repeat of the wood. And I don't want to see that. I want to see Jose take him over, let concert tour do his thing from the outside, get over to the rail, and then, you know, run from there, save some ground, and then make his run uh, in the stretch there. I really look for a big effort from this uh, uh, number nine risk-taking tomorrow. Like I said, I think this is the Chad Brown cloud computing horse and not the four-horse crowded trade. My top choice, the nine-horse risk-taking. And then we finally close out the field with the other Bob Baffert train concert tour. Now, Beaten favorite in the Arkansas Derby. Love beaten favorites. Going to use him on my pick three along with risk taking. And when you watch the Arkansas Derby, it when when Superstock got up and won that race, it looked like Concert Tour was basically just running on quicksand. He wasn't and and when I saw the race, I said, Well, you know, I'm not gonna we're not gonna see that horse in the derby because you look and you see it, when when horses run even and they don't make a move and they just kind of, you know, plod along and, you know, and you look at the derby for the next race, you you tend to like that kind of race more than a horse who finishes third and is doing the moonwalk, doing the Michael Jackson moonwalk, because now you're thinking like, well, he can't get the distance. OK, so but when you look at going back to risk taking you know he can get the distance. He's by Medaglia Doro, right? He's won two straight races at a mile and an eighth around two turns. And then he throws in, you know, he comes in and runs pretty much an even race. He stopped running. So you look at that and you go, okay, he didn't really exert himself. And, you know, he didn't really do the moon. While he's kind of, you know, okay. So he's, there's more, there's more upside to what risk taking can do tomorrow. But that's why Concert Tour, I think, was left out of the Derby. I don't think the connections liked what how that Arkansas Derby looked. So I think they gave him a little rest, put some put a few, took him back to uh uh well actually stayed at Churchill, got some more works into him, and now I think he's going to be ready to roll. The outside post, will it matter? Eh, I don't know. We'll see. Depends on what you know, maybe horses to the inside of him do like that horse, that that uh, Kentucky bred horse might will take charge, the France de Goina, see what he's going to do. But Concert Tour should, you know, should break well and be close to the lead. And like I say, the I think the mile and three sixteenths is going to be good for him tomorrow. 
All right. <laughs>